Hey friend, a couple of months ago, I launched my brand new website and it was quite a few months in the making from designing it in Figma to eventually building it out in Webflow. And in this video today, I wanna to walk through a little bit of that process of how I designed it and how I built it in Webflow. So let's do it. So here's a look at my current website and if you're not familiar with the website I had before this one, it basically wasn't really on brand. I got a new brand for the Femke.Design brand that I have done in early 2020 by an amazing brand freelance designer Holly Arnett and I wanted to kind of bring my website up to date with the new branding that I had and also spotlight and showcase my side projects. So let's take a look at my website now. Let's start with the homepage and I'm just gonna refresh it so you can see this animation of my logo that's coming in up the top left. This homepage has a really high level introduction about me, a photo, what I'm currently doing, and a lot of links here in the footer. If we go to the about page, it's a similar layout, a similar design to the homepage. There's information about me on the left column, the right has summary about me and if I scroll down there's links here to several projects I've done, community resources, speaking and interviews. I also wanted to include an FAQ section on my website this time because I get a lot of frequently asked questions and I wanted to basically collect those questions and provide answers to them on my website. So people can come in here, ask me a question and then I'll eventually post the answer on my website. Some of the links in the footer link out to external websites like the mentoring goes to my super peer and obviously I have social links and my job board. One interesting page that I've added is the sort of resources page called Learn Design where I have a lot of different recommendations for different ways to learn design. So you can tab between podcasts that I recommend, different courses that I recommend for learning design and then also other design creators that are creating content around design. Another page similar to the resources page is a page that I've called my stack, which is sort of a ongoing collection of all of the different tools that I use related to kind of running my side projects and also being a designer. So let's start by taking a look at the design I created for this website in Figma. So if I hop on over there, you can see the different sort of variations I was going with the design. And I started actually by creating the sort of portfolio or resume page for my website and then building it out from there. So running through this design very briefly, I've kind of got this two column grid happening here, but they're kind of not not 50-50 even, there's like two thirds and then one third on the right hand side. And I'm kind of alternating that a little bit as I go throughout the page of this design. And here I sort of have a title, the description of that job and sort of links out to different things. And this was kind of a very early design. I iterated a little bit, mostly with different colors, different brand colors, trying the pink and the green. I thought the green was kind of fun, but maybe not super accessible. Red being a little bit difficult to read and the black just didn't super feel on brand. So I eventually went with the light version and leaning into kind of the red tone as my accent color. So the design of this page kind of started informing the other pages. So if we go to the about page here, you'll see this is kind of following a very similar design. I was testing a few different iterations here at the top, trying to figure out how I wanted to have that like hero intro section. Eventually, I believe I settled on the two column layout. I don't actually think I put the photo, let's check. No, I didn't end up putting the photo in the final implementation, but was kind of expecting experimenting here with what that sort of heading and intro section would be. And you can see not much else I was sort of playing around with. I think I felt very confident at the time of designing this, the kind of feeling and style and vibe I wanted. I think it was very helpful to have the existing Femke Dot Design brand that had already been established that was kind of influencing the look and feel of this design. So going on to the speaking page, again, not too much deviation here from the designs of the other pages, but just playing out with a couple of different layouts. The homepage I started creating, but as you can see, stopped creating it. I didn't know at the time what content I actually wanted to put in the homepage. So I kind of felt like I would just figure that out a little bit once I started actually building the website. And then the last page I designed was the design 101 and kind of that tabs design. So you can see here if I zoom in a little bit, 
the sort of design, I was playing around with the tabs, which pretty much match almost the final design that I have here uh, without kind of that little illustration there in a couple of different colors. But generally I wanted it so that when you hover over something in this section, it would kind of bring up this white box, which I did eventually implement in Webflow. So that was kind of the design I had in Figma, pretty basic. And I think I had a very strong sort of vision in my head of what I wanted this website to look like. So that's why you don't see any sort of radical different explorations or different styles of the website. I had the brand established already and kind of knew in my head I wanted to go with this kind of uneven two column layout and just kind of let it flow from there. Before I show you how I built this website in Webflow, I want to tell you about a tool called Reloom. Now, if you already have designs ready to go for a website and want to build that website in Webflow, but maybe you're constrained a little bit on time or your skill set, they are experts at converting your Figma or Sketch website designs to be pixel perfect on Webflow. They're obsessed with making websites beautiful, they're fast at executing, and most importantly, they pay attention to detail. So the final website you get looks, acts, and feels just the same as the design you made. Feel free to give them a try for your next Webflow project. The link is in the description below. And thanks to Reloom for sponsoring this video. Okay, so now we've seen the Figma, let's jump on over to Webflow. And if you're not familiar with Webflow or how to use Webflow, it's basically a no code website builder and you can create a fully custom interactive live website without having to use any code. So as a designer who doesn't have really much coding experience, I love using Webflow because I can basically bring my own designs and visualizations to life without having to rely on using code. And it can be a little bit of a steep learning curve to get started with Webflow, but they have a great university with a lot of really easy to follow along tutorials. I'll link that in the description below if you wanna get started with Webflow. All right, so here is my homepage and I have the navigation here at the top as a symbol because it's repeated across a lot of the pages. Nothing super fancy going on here except for potentially the logo, which if you remember, if I refresh my website again, you'll see that it actually animates in. And how I did this was by uploading a GIF that I have of this logo animation. And I got my logo animated by a freelance motion designer, Austin Saylor, he's amazing. I'll link him in the description below. And he gave me a animation of my logo that I could open up in Premiere. And I basically just altered the colors of the logo, exported it with a transparent background as a GIF. And then I can just upload that into Webflow right here as an image. And every time you sort of load the site for the first time, that logo will animate in like that, which I think is a nice little touch. And I've gotten a lot of compliments on this animated logo. Next is the main content. And this is in a grid so that I could kind of set up these two columns here. And you can easily adjust the columns in your grid uh, by interacting with that little icon there. And I've set mine to be a three column grid, as you can see here. Um, but I wanted the content on the left to kind of expand across two columns. In order to get my content to span those two grids with this sort of content block selected, with the position, you can select how many columns you want it to span. So in this case, it is spanning across two columns and it's only spanning downwards across one row. Uh, but then if I click on the sidebar, you can see it's only spanning one column. So that's kind of how I got this like two thirds and then one third effect going on here with the layout of my website. You can see in the sidebar here, there's actually quite a lot of padding and I wanted that effect because I didn't want the content to kind of be like too close together. I wanted a bit of breathing room between them. So you can do that really easily by selecting the content and then here in padding, you can see I've just selected uh, like 100 padding. You can set that to be whatever number you want. It's super customizable. Let's see some other interesting things I have, some rounded corners here on the images that I put in here and that's super easy. At first I thought I had to 
make my images with rounded corners in Figma and export them that way. But actually I didn't have to do that at all. You can set the rounded corners right here in Webflow. So with your image selected, uh, just go down to borders and then there's actually a radius that you can set to your borders. So I've set that to be five pixels so that as you can see on the website, they have these really nice soft edges. One thing that I feel like I see missed a lot on sort of portfolio websites is hover states. And so I wanted to make sure that my links had really clear hover states. You can see that here, if I hover over a link, it kind of turns that darker shade of red. And that's pretty simple to set up. If you go to uh, like, just click on any of your link text, uh, Webflow lets you set different states for different text styles. So here in the top right under selector, I've got my link text selected and I can actually select the different states and adjust the sort of properties of that state. Uh, so in this case on hover, I wanted to have a, um, a darker sort of background highlighted. So I've just adjusted the hex code for a hover state. And you can do the same for other states too. Like if you want it pressed or focused, maybe you want different colors uh, for different kinds of states. You can just easily adjust that by making sure you have that state selected and then adjusting whatever properties necessary. Let me show you how I created those tabs. So if I go to design 101, I have this sort of tab interaction happening and Webflow actually provides tabs as an element that you can kind of drop in. So if you go to the add panel of Webflow and scroll down, you can actually find tabs here under components. And so I just dragged and dropped this into my canvas here and it kind of gave me basically designed tabs and you can kind of edit and customize those as you wish. So I edited, you know, the styling, the typeface, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can easily edit the content within each tab by going over to the tabs menu settings. And then you can toggle between the different tabs that you've created. And that's kind of how you then sort of add the content to the different tabs that you have. Within each of these blocks of content, there's actually quite a bit going on. I created a div block and then within that div block created a link block. And then within that, it has the columns with the content in it. And so the sort of background, if we go to the website, you can see when you hover over it, that entire div block is getting that white background with those rounded corners. Those properties are set at the div level at the top level. So this sort of container here with div is what I've added the white background and the link block is what has the actual sort of link attached to it so that when you interact and you click on something on my website, it takes you to the link uh, that has been assigned to that piece of content. Here within the link block, I have used columns instead of a grid. So if you think about a grid, you get multiple columns, multiple rows, but in this case, I only have sort of one row of content. So I've used a column, one column for the image, and then another column for the text content on the right hand side. That's pretty much how I built the website, mostly using Webflow's grids and columns and div blocks, and then kind of adding different pieces of content like text and images into the div blocks. There's no custom code happening with this website at all. So it's all pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Lastly, I'll just show you what this looks like on sort of a really large screen. I intentionally wanted to make sure that I had the sort of uh, white space on the left and the right of the content on really large screens. And then on the mobile device as well, just tweaking a little bit some of the spacing there and the margins to make sure that it's looking good on mobile. Okay, friend, that was a very brief, quick and sort of high level look at how I designed and built my site in Webflow. As mentioned, if you're looking for sort of more in depth tutorials on how to actually use Webflow and bring your designs to life, then check out their university, which has great tutorials and videos. And lastly, if you don't have the time or skills to invest in learning how to build your website in Webflow, yourself, then check out Reloom. Hope you're having a great summer or winter if you're down under. Don't worry, I don't forget about you all down there. Have a great week and I'll catch you next time. Bye!